In today's video, I'm going to be making isoamyl acetate. This compound is what gives bananas their flavor, and it's also found as artificial banana flavoring in candy. It's also a bee pheromone that's used to signal other bees to start attacking. Anyway, to make this compound, I used 24.3 grams of isoamyl alcohol, 16.35 grams of glacial acetic acid, and to catalyze the reaction, I used 10 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. To a 500 milliliter flask, I first added the isoamyl alcohol, and then on top of that, I added my glacial acetic acid. Finally, I slowly added my sulfuric acid to prevent the mixture from getting too hot. As you can see though, the mixture still heated up a lot and a lot of the impurities from the sulfuric acid ended up decomposing and giving our mixture this amazing yellow color. Anyway, after I finished adding my reactants, I added a reflux condenser to the top of the flask and began heating. As you can see, the hotter the mixture gets, the more dark it gets, but that's okay because these impurities will be removed in later steps. I let the mixture reflux for about an hour, but looking back on it, I would probably give it a little bit more time. The reaction taking place here is just a simple Fischer esterification. The acetic acid and the isoamyl alcohol are basically just condensing together. The sulfuric acid with its low pH is helping drive the equilibrium towards our favored isoamyl acetate product. Anyway, after the reflux was complete, I added some baking soda to the mixture to neutralize any leftover acids, and I also added some water as well. The water should help dissolve any leftover acetic acid as well as sulfuric acid, and it will also dissolve any chunks of sodium bicarbonate left over from the reaction. I then transferred this mixture to a separatory funnel and filtered off the bottom layer. To our isoamyl acetate, I then added a sodium bicarbonate solution and then shook it around a little bit to remove any leftover acids there may be. I again discarded the bottom layer and we're now left over with some isoamyl acetate that's obviously not very pure. I transferred our isoamyl acetate over to a small Erlenmeyer flask and then added some calcium chloride to help remove water. After this, I transferred it to another round bottom flask that also had some calcium chloride in it as well. I then set up for distillation. I covered the reaction flask and the still head in aluminum foil to help insulate some of the heat. This is where I ran into a bit of an issue where I noticed on my thermocouple reader everything was coming over at around 80 degrees Celsius. However, isoamyl acetate has a boiling point well above 100 degrees Celsius. However, this entire time my lab smelled like the top banana jelly belly flavor, so I knew I had isoamyl acetate. There was also a really small amount of water trapped in my condenser after the distillation was complete, so from what I can tell, my thermocouples are just wildly inaccurate. But despite this, we were getting some really nice crystal clear liquid coming over, and although this might not be 100% pure isoamyl acetate, I'm just going to try and tell myself that this is all good and buy more thermocouples from Amazon later. Anyway, as the distillation flask was almost empty, I turned off the heating and we were left with some pretty nice crystal clear liquid. In the end, I was left with 14.4 grams of isoamyl acetate, which corresponds to about a 41% yield. Like I said, if I were to do this reaction again, I would probably let it reflux for a little bit longer, and that might help increase our yield a little bit. Some of the reactants might have also not been 100% dry at this point, and that could have also hurt our yield a little bit. In any case, this was enough isoamyl acetate to fill up two whole vials, and that's more than enough for me. I'm not going to be using this for flavoring anything either, I just like the smell of it, so this is a totally cool outcome for me. Anyway, I have a lot of exciting video plans coming up soon. I'm going to be revamping my Patreon page, as well as probably the YouTube channel as well, and I'm also close to unlocking channel memberships on the channel. So stay tuned for all of that, I'm going to be revamping a lot of things, including maybe even the videos as well, so just keep a lookout for that. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.